Hello friends and enemies, it's me Isabel here with a new reading, not the tropes, reading outside my comfort zone kind of slash busting that slump. So I mean I experience this as a reader and I feel like everyone does right that book that like keeps you up all night. I haven't had that in months. So I decided that I was going to read a bunch of books that at first look were immediate no's to me or authors I pretty much wouldn't read uh, is one of them but somebody I like a lot on here suggested it. I'll get into it more later when we get there. So I decided I will read one book by her. Uh, but yeah they're a mega fan of her and I just I would like to give her a shot but I have hesitancies because of something she's published and we'll get there. Anyways, I'm going to read books outside my comfort zone. So I don't have like a huge set TBR for this. I'm kind of doing it as I go, but I'll tell you that this is really exciting and I'm very excited to dive in and see what about these books either I don't like, why they kept me up all night, <laughs> uh, is there a redeeming quality, and all those fun things. So the first book I'm gonna read is The Boys of Brashaw High by Megan Brandy and then I'm just every time I finish a book I'll give you the next book I'm reading because I don't fully know yet I just kind of have this big list and we're working through it um so I'll say off the bat why I was not interested in this book when I heard about it. number one it's set in a high school I'm not I'm, I'm to the point that high school age romance bully stuff just isn't for me um it generally doesn't interest me I am always looking for a good like polyamorous relationship book and I'm hoping this has that but I'm not sure if it will um, and I'm always looking for like some of the elements of this just in adult stories and not set in high school like some of, and my other big turnoff is I don't like when things are marketed as a reverse harem because that's not cool like that's not what it is it's literally just usually polyamory I feel like and it's just using this term that is pretty cringe and like frowned upon at this point and we know better. It's kind of like using other slurs to an extent for me. Obviously it's different for everyone else but I do think a lot of people would agree that that's just not it. So that's the last time we will use that word in this video. Um, but yeah so I'm gonna dive into that book and I will update you very soon with my thoughts. All right so Hopefully the game isn't too loud in the background. I am 80% through The Boys of Brashaw, Brashaw High, whatever. I stayed up until 3 a.m. reading this book. What is wrong with me? This book is not good. Um, I can't wait to finish it and dive more into it. Um, I'm equating it to a popcorn book where like I can't stop, but I'm, it's not good. God, it has potential, but I really also feel weird reading about high schoolers. Um, but I mean, that's kind of the point of this vlog is I'm trying to step outside of like what I normally read and read some dark romances and stuff to try and like reinvigorate my um, my reading right now because it's a struggle and I'm in my comfy, of course, because I can and I have to. It's just the best. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm 80% through and I'm basically like playing Animal Crossing and then breaking and reading for a little bit. This book is bad. Um, more on that later. I just wanted to update you now before I forget. Hello. Um, reporting to you from my bed. <laughs> um, yeah, so I finished that book. I finished The Boys of Brashaw High and it ended in a cliffhanger. So... I started book two. I'm ashamed. Objectively, like this, these books aren't great, okay? But on the like, turn off my brain and just read popcorn, these books are popcorn. They're ridiculous, over the top drama, very soapy. I'm 100% getting like Boys Over Flowers esque vibes. Um, little squicked by like, 17 8 year olds boning in a book obviously it's like new adultish i'm not saying like they can't do that i'm just i'm a grown woman who doesn't necessarily want to read that but also i'm still reading the series uh yeah so i'm gonna keep reading book two and i will be back with more hot takes on this 
trash pile very soon. Hello, um, coming to you from my kitchen. I am just here because my usual filming state space upstairs is like right next to Dave's office and he has work during the day. So I wanted somewhere I could like pop on and update you on what I'm reading. Oh boy. So I just finished book three in the Boys of Bradshaw High series. Um, so I thought I was only going to read one and I have tore through all three books in like four days, staying up until three in the morning to read because I can't stop, but I don't like these books. First of all, it does not live up to its label because they all three only kind of mess around one time in book one. So like that was not fun, but also they're in high school. <laughs> And I have weird feelings reading about high school kids, but that's part of this vlog series, reading vlog thing I'm doing, right? Is I'm reading a lot of these books I normally thought I would never pick up or had really no interest in. And here I am <laughs> finishing a trilogy that I think I rate every single book as two stars, but I couldn't stop reading them. Objectively, like, they're just not that great. But right now in the pandemic times, they are the perfect popcorn read in which there's a cliffhanger constantly and something's happening and on the edge and you don't quite know where the author is going with the plot. So you end up sucked right in and three books done and going, why did I waste my time? But it's fine because I did a video. <laughs> so The Boys at Brashaw High is about Raven Carver who lives in a trailer park in California. Yeah, these are set in California. In California, and she gets removed from her home and sent to a family home for girls in this other town and has to go to Brayshaw High, where the boys, Maddox, Captain, and Royce rule the school. Um, and she quickly is like, yeah, fuck you. Like, literally gives no shits and does not tolerate their like running of the school or attempts to bully her. She pushes back a lot. There's a lot of like, I guess, intrigue around who she really is. Things start to unravel. It's basically the mafia um, slash like small town mafias. And it's wild and like seriously not very good, but also very engaging at the same time. I'm very conflicted about these books. Um, so I, I want to know as I finish these, like, do you have a series like this that you've read all of them? Because it wasn't a, it wasn't a hate read. I've hate read a book series, okay? Like, I have. Um, and it was one that I hate read because the author used BDSM as a reason that the character was broken. It was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> Um, and I hate read most of that series and I stopped on the last book. So I've hate read a book or two here. This is nothing new. This wasn't really a hate read because I kind of was enjoying it. And I wasn't like angry the whole time. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so very confused. Um, but yeah, I read that. And now I'm looking at my list of books. And I think the next one I'm going to read because I have quite a few high school ones on here. I wanted to break them up with like non-high school ones. And so just like, um, I guess I do have a comparison for the Boys of Bradshaw High. It feels like a knockoff Paper Princess. Not in a bad way necessarily in a knockoff, but just kind of like an iterative of that book, those books, that time, which I loved Paper Princess and stuff. But like, I also know like, these books are kind of problematic. We recognize that we can, you know, go from there. So yeah, um, that was my final like feelings on it is it reminded me as a not quite as good paper princess. On to the next book I'm reading, Cruel Black Hearts. To my knowledge, this is my like vague knowledge of it is Stella and meets these two guys and they kind of like start doing stuff and messing around and it turns out they're like serial killers, quite possibly. We'll see, I'm gonna dive in. And then after this, I'll read another like high school one. 
y'all there's a lot of high school romances i decided i would never read and then here i am but hey it should be some fun content so i'll update you in a little bit when i get further into cruel black hearts okay so i am 15% into Cruel Black Hearts and like I'm bored. I'm bored. It's. Hmm. Do I get the app to cooperate? It's like 249 pages. I think I'm going to DNF it. So I was like, no, I'm not going to DNF anything on this. But like, I'm just bored. Like, if you're going to have a romance with serial killers, like, let's get to it. But so far, it's just her and the guy in a bar talking bored so i'm gonna put this one to the side i think i'm gonna go back to the high school bully romances okay so i meant meant to get on an update earlier but i read enemies by tijin today literally today finished it in a day i got it on audible escape here's the cover i didn't think i'd love this i really liked this book i've not read tijin before because honestly like most of her books just kind of didn't appeal to me personally so i just thought We'll leave them to the side and one day, one day, it'll happen and we'll, you know, dive in and maybe give her a try. But Enemy has surprised me. It's a solid three-star read. I was very engaged during my Animal Crossing time today and really, really enjoyed my time with it. It is about, so Stone is a guy from her hometown who now plays for a Texas professional football team. He is like a big man on campus, well not campus literally, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and she is his former childhood best friend and they became enemies because he kind of started ignoring her once puberty hit. Um, this one was pure drama, number one. It's definitely new adult. It wasn't like, you know, amazing it was just like it's three stars like if it interests you i think check it out why not also why did dusty that was her name so dusty um moves down to where he's playing football um but not because he's there she moved because it has like a marine biology program she wants to attend drama ensues it's dramatic it's over the top it's ridiculous but it was fun <laughs> So I really, really, really enjoyed my time with it. And I think that if the plot summary interests you at all to check it out, I'm going to say three star. I also think coming off of Cruel Dark Hearts, it's a little easier to like this because that book really did not get my attention, hence the DNF. So we'll see where I come out of this all at the end. Like we'll do a quick ranking of all the books. Should be interesting. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. So I finished another book. I finished Necromancer's Bride by Brianna Hale. Um, Tamika, what did you just recommend to me? Because this book was a lot. Uh, I think I inserted a clip before this of me reading it and having a interesting reaction. Um, if you want the weirdest dirty book you've ever read in your life, this is it. Um, she goes off to be the Necromancer's wife and it has a little bit of fairy tale to it but it, a lot of things slash one thing in particular that really uh threw me and if you i don't know if i want to say it and spoil it because it's just so gross i don't want to say it because it's so gross but it was disgusting and i like cringe like physically felt my body recoiling but i finished it and it is definitely an author that i am open to trying another book from but problem I have is Brianna Hale is on my do not read list because of her book The Midnight Hunter which follows a Stasi uh, hero and from people I know that have read it said that he does not redeem himself enough. Also I don't know how you can redeem yourself from that position personally so I'm just like a no-go on most of her books because of that which sucks because I do think she probably has some that I would really enjoy. So yeah my one and done <laughs> For this this is real weird real dirty but also not but the weird this is the weirdest fucking book I've ever read in my life so that's that's probably saying a lot but that's yeah that's that's the one that's the weirdest one 
it wins the award. So to cleanse myself from this, I'm going to go read Vicious by LJ Shen. I will update you tomorrow on how that goes. Hello, I'm back. I finished another book. I just finished reading Vicious by LJ Shen. I think I liked it. I actually like, I kind of want to read the sequel. So I'm going to say I liked it. I gave it a three star. This follows Vicious or Vic, um, who is like super filthy rich and, um, Millie, whose family is not and works in his mansion. His dad's a piece of crap. Stepmom's a piece of crap. His mom was murdered. A whole bunch of stuff happens. Um, his mom died and then a whole bunch of stuff happened. And it's kind of about his desire to be with Millie, but also like reluctance to have feelings and emotions. And I thought, so I was worried this was gonna be the book of like, here's the magic woman to heal him and she's got the magic V, all better. And it wasn't that, and also that she was gonna be used too much to heal him. I don't, depending on my mood, I don't always like those books. You know, women are not men's therapists <laughs> unless they are being paid to be their therapist situation. And actually this book was really good because Millie stood her ground a lot with Vicious and really stood up. Also, I thought this was like a purely high school book, but actually it's set 10 years after their senior year and it has like flashbacks to the high school stuff. Um, it's dramatic, it's over the top, but I didn't hate it. Like I said, I kind of want to read book two because I'm actually more interested in that relationship from the snippets I got in this book. So that may happen. So I think next I'm going to read Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is the one that I've been like hesitant on because I feel like everyone really liked it and said it, or said it was really divisive as well. They either liked it or hated it and then it's very divisive. So. I'm gonna dive into Credence and I will let you know what I think hopefully in the next day or two as I finish it. Hello, okay. So I did it. I read seven books outside my comfort zone, almost eight. Slash like I wasn't sure I would like or didn't seem entirely up my alley. What were the results? I mean, you kind of saw my reactions that I read, but I did not summarize one of the books for you yet. So I finished Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is, this is just Penelope Douglas. Like I have read quite a few of her books at this point and I feel like she does a really good job at writing taboo dark romance that crosses the line, but she also makes it okay, generally. I had some qualms with Credence. She's not 18 in the beginning of this book, but that kind of sets up her going to live with this family. Um, obviously if she was 18, she wouldn't have to do that necessarily. Um, it's a little, it's dirty. Like it's a very dirty book. It was fun though. Like it was definitely readable. It was not like the worst thing I've ever read. I think I'm weird because it was like a three star. It didn't like blow my mind and it didn't, it wasn't like the worst. It wasn't like throwing in the trash <laughs> levels. Um, I don't love who she ends up with because I don't believe in women healing men as a trope. Super against it. I don't love it generally. Um, sometimes I do like it. I'm not gonna say like it's a never, but for the most part, it's not my thing. Um, yeah, I feel like I've said that before here. It's nothing new. I just, that part, you know um it worked weirdly well for something that I thought should not work but real quick I'm gonna run through all the books I read and then we'll do a tier ranking and I'll say like when I run through them kind of uh if I think you should read them and honestly like wreck me some books like this in the comments because I'm really really down to do a round two of this so first I read the three books in the Boys of Brasha High trilogy. This was fun. Uh, compulsively readable is what I'm calling it. That is where I ranked it on my tier ranker. I think I gave them all like three stars, maybe two and a half. They have some issues. They are definitely problematic. But I think it's a text you can read and know like it's fiction and kind of separate yourself from it some to still enjoy the readability. 
Then I tried to read Cruel Black Hearts by Candace Womack. Um, I did after this. I got like 15% in and I was just not into it. I was bored. I wanted more to happen. Um, I was looking for those books that just start off like running. Like you open that book and you're gone. Um, so this didn't do that for me so I DNF'd it. <laughs> Maybe I'll revisit it at some point. I don't know if anyone has like super strong feelings about that book and thinks I should really give it a shot sometime let me know. <sighs> okay then I read Enemies by Tijin who is an author I've kind of just written off as not for me. Like her Instagram ads I get don't appeal to me. Most of her book summaries don't appeal to me but I decided to pick up Enemies which is on Audible Escape and I liked, I liked it. Like it was fine. It was like a three star. Like it wasn't like a high three. It was like a low three, but it was fine. Like it, for the most part, like accomplished what it set out to do. It was interesting plot wise. Like it delivered for the most part, I would say. And like, you know, I've read worse things in this series. Uh, let's see. Necromancer's Bride is next by Brianna Hale. So I kind of talked about this some when I brought it up earlier. Brianna Hale is an author that I want to read, but I have huge issues with her book, The Midnight Hunter, and writing a taboo romance using a character like that because I'm not, like, I'm here for your dark romances. I like dark romances. I'm not here for that. Um, I have linked down below in the comments a whole thread about like Stasi heroes and the issue with that. Um, do with it what you will, what you like. Obviously your reading is your choice. I thank Tamika so much for wrecking Necromancer's Bride because I would have never picked this book. But also, you did not give me enough warning. <laughs> oh, you did not give me enough warning. Um, this book is a two star for me. Um, it's well written. It just grossed me out so much. Um, there's some things that happen that are really disgusting to me. Uh, and just don't do it for me in any capacity. So proceed with caution if you would like to check out The Necromancer's Bride. Next, we have Vicious by LJ. Yeah, by LJ Shin. I was about to say TJ again. This is like, LJ Shin, like, in my mind, wrote like these high school romances and I'd never read them because like that's, we've been over this, like, I'm at the age where like that's not what I want to read anymore. I'm too far removed. Um, and Vicious was not bad, number one, which was surprising. It was more of a, um, 10 years after with flashbacks. Vicious is absolutely cruel and a total bully. Um, but it was good. I enjoyed this. Like, it was another three-star read. So, I might, in the next month or two, read the second book, because I kind of want to hear how the setup for that works out. Because the end of this last one had me interested. I do think there are issues with it, within itself. Obviously, being a bully romance, there's always issues with bully romances. Like, it's not okay to be a bully. Um, and the endless cruelty that is displayed sometimes was like heart-wrenching. But this was weirdly readable and enjoyable. All right, and then last was Credence, which we just talked about, which I'm giving like a three and a half, four star, I think, total. I am still surprised by this book. Like I said, I think unlike everyone, everyone I felt like the reviews I read were like, I loved it, I hated it. And I'm like right in the middle. It was fine. Um, so yeah, here is my tier ranking. Just so you can quickly see where everybody falls. I'm pretty pleased with this overall. Um, but yeah, that was the seven books I read outside my comfort zone of sorts slash thought I wouldn't like. Let me know if you have read any of these. <laughs> or if you have one you want me to try that kind of falls into these categories that I'm just not a big fan of. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in a few days with a new video. Talk to you then. Bye.